Hello, hello, everyone. It is Melissa Santana here, your co-host of the Miss Texas Show. And excited as always to bring another edition of our show and another wonderful, wonderful guest. That guest today is El um, Elena. Um, I like to say in Spanish, but it might be Elena as well. Uh, but Elena has a wealth of experience. Elena is a life coach. Elena is also a vocational trainer. Um, Elena has written three books, has also has multiple degrees has helped the lives of so many people, has also worked at the university, just literally has tons of experience. And so we are super excited to have Elena with us today to be able to tell us more about her own story, about her journey, and about all the wonderful things she's done, and also the wonderful way she helps others. And so with that, we are going to have Elena on the show. And so, you know, we look forward to having her and talking with all of you. Texas show is a voice of hope for victims, survivors, advocates, and community leaders against gender-based violence to share their stories and resources. We began showcasing life in Texas. Today, we are impacting lives not only in Texas, but also around the world. Under our segment, Military Time, we run this segment in partnership with the National Veterans Chamber of Commerce. We invite military and veterans who have overcome traumatic events to share their experiences during and after their military service. Under our beauty segment, we invite fellow pageant winners and contestants, artists, musicians, actors, models, and dancers, and last but not least, our survivor leaders from family violence, sex trafficking, sexual assault, stalking, and other traumatic events who are ambassadors for these causes to share their lives and the impact they have made. To become a guest on our show, email us at msusatexas at gmail.com. If you would like to support victims and survivors of gender-based violence, make a tax-deductible donation to Hope Picks Global at www.hopeyxglobal.org. Hello again, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Miss Texas Show. And as you, um, as always, not only are we excited to be able to have another great conversation, but to be able to have an incredible guest. And so our guest today is no less of an honor and pleasure. We have Elena Georgie Yu with us today. <laughs> and so I want to tell you all a little bit about Elena. She lived in an abusive environment from childhood into adulthood. She was looking for an exit door from her parents. When she started dating her future husband at age 18, she thought that she would gain her freedom, but instead her life became a scary movie. She endured, um, well, I, she endured her husband's abuse for 20 years before she managed to escape, but she did become a survivor and is now a thriving star. At the age of 38, 15 years ago, she passed the entering exam to enter university and fulfill her childhood dreams. She was awarded with a bachelor's in sociology. She has a college diploma in life skills coaching. She has a master of arts in European studies. She, ha she has researched the causes of domestic violence and has looked at ways to improve legislation gaps and reduce abuse. She has done a case study on gender-based violence for her master's thesis. She has created policies and procedures for a new university office dealing with gender-based violence. And as a result of her work, the universe instituted her recommendations. She is also a certified vocational trainer and certified life skills coach who loves helping people on their healing journey. She has published um, three books, which she'll tell us about today. Um, and outside of her creative and healing work, she works in student welfare services at the University of Cyprus, where she has helped young people for over 22 years now with their housing needs. Last year, these experiences of helping others inspired her to run for the parliament of Cyprus. And although she might have lost an election, she had the opportunity to speak about abuse, present her research and share recommendations on what needs to be done to create change and has created a proposal to bring change in the legislation. And so with that being said, we are just super excited to have you with us today for you to even take the time out. We're like super, super excited um, and super honored. And you definitely have had a tremendous journey, a lot of experiences, and you've done so much to help so many others. So Elena, if you could just let the viewers know a little bit more about yourself, who you are, a little bit about your journey, just more about you. Hello, I'm Melissa. I'm really excited to be here with you to share my story and thank you for inviting me. And I'm walking on a brand new path now. Um, and this is a journey to raise awareness for abuse and to spread hope and healing in the world. And 
uh, to inspire and encourage other victim survivors uh, to break the silence also, just like I did. So after surviving decades of abuse, I channeled my grief into helping others find a path to healing as a Europe ambassador, advocate, researcher, storyteller, and author. So there is life after abuse and I'm a living proof. I said yes to me and I want other women to be able to do the same. So my story was um, that I'm about to share uh, was awarded and was published as part of the World Pulse Organization Story Awards. And I received the Feature Storyteller Badge and you can find my story on the World Pulse Organization. I have a profile there. And also recently, I became a Europe ambassador with Hope PYX Global Organization. And I'm taking part in the International Book Awards coming up. I'm so excited, super excited with my book, Live Life to Fullest and Never Look Back. And me and my book, our own mission to spread messages of hope and make an impact in the world. And um, today I'm going to share with you, Melissa, the full version of my story. I have been interviewed many times in my life, but I only share part of it because I wasn't brave enough to share all of it. But you will have the full version. And um, uh, I'm going to lead the way for other victim survivors to do the same also. And as an important voice and the voice of voiceless that I represent in Europe, I will not only share my story, but all the hard work I have done uh, all these years and uh, my own involvement as a victim, survivor, and victor. So my story goes, once upon a time, there was a little girl named Elena. And this little girl is going to share with you today her adventurous life journey. Um, my story contains sensible information. And my intention is not to blame anyone that took part in my journey. But my intention, I have said it in, in the start when I started to begin to speak, that my intention uh, is that um, I'm walking on a journey to raise a warrant. That's my intent. That's my intention. And to encourage and inspire other victims, survivors to do the same, just like me. So I lived in an authority and an abusive environment from childhood until adulthood. And growing up, I faced physical, emotional, and verbal abuse from my parents. I had dreams to leave my country and study abroad after I finished high school. But my parents had other dreams for me to marry and have children. So I was looking for an exit door. And when I started dating my future husband at the age of 18, I imagined that he could offer me the affection I never received. And also I thought I would gain my freedom, but instead my life became a scary movie. So I endured my husband's abuse for 20 years, physical, emotional, verbal, uh, economic, and bullying before I managed to escape uh, abuse. In this abusive marriage, I wasn't allowed to work or socialize. I stayed for 10 years raising my children and I have three. So one day I decided to apply for a job and I started working at the university where I work now for 22 years. So when my abuser found out, he beat me up that day and he did that the same thing he did he beat me up again when I passed the entrance exams to study at the university. And this situation, the same situation was going on for 20 years. So, but this, I remember this was the first time I stood up for myself and I insisted and I continued working despite his objections. So I remember um, I was crying that day because he was beating me up and I run to my secret shelter. And that was my bathroom. I locked myself in the bathroom, called the police. The police came and he spent the night uh, at the police station. And in the morning, the police called and told me that we have two options, either to sign to release him. He said, sorry, he will not do that again. But he did many times after that. Or take him to court and... Um, 
what I did, I wasn't strong enough and I wasn't ready to put him behind bars because I didn't know if I did that, what would happen because I didn't have any support. I was alone fighting for this. So I just signed for him and released him. So all this was happening in front of my three children and, it, and this is considered a double crime. And the authorities were unable to do anything to help me or give me safety or support me or psychological support or any kind of support. And this was going on, reporting to the police and welfare office for 10, 20 years and they were not doing anything. Also, there were not any shelters in Cyprus back in 1988 when the abuse started. So this was going on for 20 years. I was locking myself in the bathroom, calling the police, and doing it all, all over again. And I always had my car keys also in my pocket, not only the bathroom keys. And my car keys saved my life after the last episode of abuse because he tried to kill me. And if I didn't have the car keys in my uh, pocket, that means I wouldn't be here sharing my story and my victories with you today. So, um, as I escaped the circle of violence, I wasn't alone. Um, I had help and that was my therapist because I afforded a therapist because I had a job and my friends that helped me stand on my two feet. So after years of research, uh, I found out that we carry layers of conditioning, behaviors and attitudes from generation to generation. So I cannot blame uh, my parents and my ex-husband for carrying on the violence they received from, from their uh, parents and they learn from their parents. So that's why I told you I don't blame anyone. So the only way to transition out of this situation is to break the chains that are keeping us stuck and become much more authentic selves. And I wrote all about it in my books and I have different kinds of tools uh, that can help anyone in the situation they're in. So I gained my freedom, but after divorce, as I processed the trauma that I endured uh, and began the healing journey, the bank in Cyprus took all my money and possessions because I had signed, um, I had signed a loan for my husband when we were married and he never paid back the money to revenge me. After all, I said no to his abuse and I walked away. So he needed to revenge me, right? So he did. And on top of this, my dad and my ex-husband joined forces together to tell my children lies and turn them against me. So I not only lost all my money and possessions, I lost my children. And two of my children, because I have three, two of my children are against me until today and they don't talk to me. So I was not included in the family's will after my dad died also. So looking back, I can see that my parents and my ex-husband brought my guilt, shame, and internal devaluation to the surface. I tried to speak with logic, to approach with love, to help them, to heal them, to lead them in the right path. But I always found a wall, a wall that I hit repeatedly and after I was emotional injured. They might have loved me, but not in the way I deserve to be loved. And at first, I didn't know what was next for me. I couldn't understand why anything I did backfired so hard. Life had no meaning. I stopped doing what I love, writing, journaling, inspiring people. I forgot who I was and my value. I couldn't stand in the mirror because I couldn't recognize that person staring back at me. I was strained and lost. So one moment that I thought that I was a lost cause and that was it, something inside me told me that I had enough. And I wanted to come back to me, to heal myself and to do my inner work. So to be able to reach wholeness, I had to first forgive myself and then others. And uh, I had to find a way to transition out of abusive environment that had surrounded me and once and for all, and to find the freedom I was seeking as a young woman. So I fought back. I said yes to life. 
I, has, I said yes to me, yes to my truth. And despite all odds, I won. I won back my voice. I won back my power. <laughs> and this brings me to who I am today. I am a survivor and I am now a thriving star. And at the age of 35 years old, 15 years ago, I passed the entrance exams of the University of Cyprus, where I work also to study because I wanted to change my life and to become a better person. And um, I wanted to teach and train people to be able to share my knowledge, my wisdom, and all the life lessons I learned in my journey. So I, uh, I gained um, and received a bachelor's in sociology at the age of 42 years old, a life coach, a college diploma at the age of 45 years old, and a master's in European studies at the age of 50 years old. I am also a certified vocational trainer and a certified life coach, and I love helping people on the healing journey. And I'm really passionate about inspiring people through, and my goal is to inspire them through my writing and stories. So I'm a published author also. So my first book, it's in Greek language. I'm just gonna read it. It's the goals of life and how, and how to uh, create your dream life. And my second book is the one I already show you, Live Life to Its Fullest and Never Look Back. It's on my Amazon page. And I have a third book that I am in the process of publishing and it's called Ava's Voice, a message to all with the children that lived in an abusive authoritarian families. And Ava, I chose that name because Ava means the voice, it's in Persian. And uh, outside my creative work, and healing work that I do. I work at the Students Welfare Services of the University of Cyprus. So the University of Cyprus was my exit door from abuse. It was that door that I was looking for at the age of 18, the freedom door. And it has been my safe shelter for 22 years now. And also my academic career, not only as an employee, but also as a researcher during my studies. So I'm a researcher and I research domestic violence in Cyprus. And because there was an increase and also my own involvement as a victim survivor. And I look for ways to improve legislation gaps and reduce abuse. I created improvements in policies, procedures and a new office as part of my proposal to bring change in my country. And this was part of my bachelor's thesis work. I also did a case study at the university where I work um, and uh, as part of my master's thesis work, and I created policies, procedures and a new university office uh, dealing with gender-based violence. So I did all this hard work there because I was witnessing uh, students uh, being bullied and harassed and I wanted to do something to stop this from happening. So I decided to do a case study and give my recommendation to change the situation. And as a result of my work, the institution, uh, the university instituted my recommendations. So last year, this um, experiences of helping others inspired me to run for the parliament of Cyprus. And although I lost the election, I went out to speak about abuse and uh, share my recommendations <laughs> and uh, present my research what needs to be done in my country uh, to create change. So I created this proposal to bring change in the legislation of Cyprus as far as violence is concerned. So what I found in my research, that there is no, and my own experience, of course, there is no central database for recording domestic violence in Cyprus between governmental and non-governmental organizations. And if created, this will help the victims who reach the courts not to hide important information and then protect the victims from secondary victimization. So also monitoring their perpetrators by the competent authorities, as there is no continuous cross-checking for any previous violations 
of the perpetrators in the courts. So as an example is my abuser. He was with two years suspended imprisonment, appeared in court with white criminal record and had not committed another episode of violence. While there were 20 years of episodes of reporting to the police and welfare office for my abuse. So the court ruled that he should be fined instead of imprisonment. And um, so I faced a secondary victimization from the court and my abuser was set free, paying a small amount. And for the abuse, he caused me for 20 years. And on top of this, he was with two years suspended imprisonment because of beating someone else besides of me. So this is happening in the courts. So after that, I divorced and I had to face third victimization from the law, the court, the state and the bank because I lost my possessions and money because I had signed in 2008 a loan and the loan was settled in 2020. And uh, it was double the amount because of the many years and nobody was doing something. And I was going there, the only one that I was trying to find a way and they just left the, um, the loan like that. And as a result, I lost my money except there was one house that my, I have, have um, the half of that house is mine and my abuser is living in it now. So I'm facing now a fourth victimization from the court because the law says that I had only three years after divorce to settle the sharing, but I couldn't do that because I had to settle first the loan that took 12 years to be settled and after the sheriff. So that leaves me now with no house. And um, because my abuser, the bank, the court, the state didn't do anything to help me out as a victim survivor until today. So courts must sell and distribute properties immediately after divorce and requires loans to be repaid equitably so that the victim does not continue to suffer secondary, third, fourth victimization, just like happened to me. So victims shouldn't lose all their possessions and money because they escape an abusive relationship. So this is part of my research that I've done. So I created a proposal to bring change in the legislation of Cyprus because the law doesn't um, protect the victims and survivors fully. And sadly, I wasn't elected and uh, I couldn't put forward my proposal. And violence is decreasing here in Cyprus. And I'm trying to find that opportunity door to walk in and make the necessary changes. And if I ever get the chance in Europe also, and I want to reach the decision-making and policy-making tables to make the necessary changes. So my ultimate dream is to become a politician who writes a new story for her country or in the EU and fights to end violence. And I'm not only a researcher, I'm also an advocate that can provide vital support to victims and survivors. And I'm not only a victim. I was not only a victim, but a survivor. And I'm not only theory, I'm also practice. And this makes me and my research and my work that I do 100% accurate to share. And I want to share my knowledge and wisdom to end violence. And I know why victims don't escape abuse, because they feel hopeless. And they don't break the silence because there's no support for them. That's why. So my experience taught me and my research also that I have done that women endure abuse for many reasons. Existence of children, financial dependency, traditional um, perceptions that the fathers consider necessary and the fear of abandonment that she will not succeed alone. And the responsible agencies also governmental and non-governmental 
are not providing the required assistances that are needed for victims and survivors to escape violence and to end that repeated victimization that they are facing from abusers, from courts, from banks, from laws and the state. So many women are unable to see alternative uh, ways out of the relationships and they're trying to focus on survival within it. So I believe that recommendations like mine can help women to overcome abuse. And um, that's why I'm sharing my story today and I'm sharing it and I am continue and I'm going to continue to share my story because I want other victims and survivors to follow my lead, to escape abuse and to break the silence. And this is my um, adventurous life journey story. Wow, thank you. And I, and I find, especially, um, of course, I have to start off by saying thank you for allowing us to be the ones that you shared the full story with and all of those incredible details. I'm definitely incredibly moved, not only by what you went through, but just, just the ferocious fight that you've, you know, taken on, you know, and being able to help others. I can't agree more that, that it's what's needed. And so I feel like we need that kind of, not only passion behind it but also just like everything else that you bring to the table as well and just if there's anybody best fit to be able to provide you know to be the face of these kind of like you know, you know fights and being able to gain these like victories hopefully that we will get in the future it would be someone like yourself you know who's a survivor herself and has, you know knows firsthand but I think man you definitely touched on unfortunately a lot that does happen and in the process like you said you did highlight a lot of flaws within our system that should absolutely not exist. And so I just think from the beginning, I think it was interesting to hear that, you know, you unfortunately faced abuse yourself, you know, when you were growing up, but then, uh, and you thought you had, you know, like you said, you thought you finally found an escape only to then end up in an abusive situation, you know? And I think unfortunately too, we're not always the best judges of abuse. Like when things like that happen, if you grow up in an abusive household and all you see is abuse, it's hard for you to decipher what's not abuse because all you've had up until this point is that one example. <laughs> so I think it's like incredible because right. Like how would you know anything else though? Like since that was all you had seen over and over again. So I think it was just incredible to hear. And yeah, go ahead, my bad, were you gonna share? And, 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 and part of my research um, is like, um, I found that um, girls are socialized to be obedient and dependent. And I like the boys growing up in an environment that promotes their superiority because of their physical strength. So the way of a breaking implies social and cultural norms. So society itself encourages the male dominance based on cultural standards itself. And it's uh, located in the social structure, values, traditions, customs, habits, beliefs, linked to gender inequalities. And all that I have mentioned was based on my research findings. So another finding from my research is that violence is learned in an environment where a child grows up experiencing daily. So either uh, that child will become the abuser in his own family or the victim in his family. So that's why I said in the beginning that uh, my intention is not to blame my parents and my ex because they were abusing me. I just wanted to highlight that um, they just carry out from generation to generation this uh the violence that they learned they carried out to their family and i inherited it and now I <laughs> exactly <laughs> that was yeah, unfortunately. exactly so I'm now saying, I'm it out in the cautiousness so that means right. i break the cer the circle I broke the circle. Absolutely. And and I think that's what's great about it because yes, I, I agree with you. I definitely think it was something that it was passed down. And like you said, there is no need to place blame necessarily. It's just what it was and it's just what was continued. And like you said, it was learned behavior, but I think it's incredible and so wonderful that you're not, you're not continuing it. You know, you decided like, you know what, I'm going to be the one to put an end to this. I don't want to see this continue. I already know what it's like when it does continue. I've been there and I don't want to see it continue to be perpetrated. So I think it's just literally 
like couldn't be better to hear that you know you took that stand and you decided to put an end to that but I think too it was also incredible to hear that since unfortunately your parents all they knew was abuse and they had already been inflicting that upon you that it continued even with the husband they joined forces I think when I heard that I was like wow like I have heard different, you know, examples of abuse, but that one was interesting to hear because I I have heard of family members taking the side, unfortunately, of those, especially if they're abusive themselves. But to hear that they then did it to, you know, cause more pain, I just, I'm just, you know, incredibly moved by that part of it. And I know that, you know, you're no longer living in that part of your life and you do all these wonderful things for others, but it was just incredible to hear, you know, that that was part of your experience. And I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry that it was, but at the same time, I think that, yes, you've done incredible things since then. And you know what I mean? Like I said, you're not there, but it's just, you know, I just think it's unfortunately such an unnecessary and like tragic part when those things happen, you know, and it just continues to occur in that way. Yeah. And but yes. I, I am a, a fearless warrior woman now, so I left that behind, and I'm helping other women uh, break the silence and escape abuse. Amen. That's no, who, I agree. That's I who agree. I am now. <laughs> Amen to that. And I love that. I love that when it started with being at the university and like you said, like this incredible job that you have and what you're able to do there. I definitely think there's a lot of tremendous opportunity because I don't know if um, you know viewers might know, but universities operate on very unique policies. And so they don't necessarily mimic the criminal justice system exactly the same. If something were to happen, they actually have to report it you know, at the university. And then there's a whole separate process if they want to report it to the police. Yeah. So it's like, right, these are two different processes. But the fact that you're able to be there, act as an advocate with all the willful knowledge that you have and the tremendous empathy, you know, that you're able to show having been a survivor yourself. I just think you're definitely, I, I see why, um, you know, they were a great home for you for 22 years, but the incredible impact you've had on them uh, for 22 yeah. years, because obviously they're lucky to have you. <laughs> so like, I yeah. agree. It's like, yeah, yeah I, I was, um, I wanted to find that door of freedom. And I think the university was my door of freedom. Yes. I totally agree. And then I, what I also love too, though, knowing that in the midst of all this, you also are a writer. What I want to know is, did you always, so had you already been writing like before you joined the university? Like, was it your outlet even when you were growing up? Like, no, when did the um, writing start? Uh, well, I, um, when I finished my bachelor's degree in 2011, I started uh, writing. So I just published this, this book. It took me a long, a long years to publish it. You know, it, it's because I didn't believe in myself. So I started writing in two, uh, I think, uh, 2012. So I, I published it in 2014. It took me two years to start believing in myself that I can write books. <laughs> okay. No, and I totally agree. And that's the thing. I think sometimes, you know, that's the thing that we got to remember is that not all these things happen overnight. Like it does take time, especially when all you've heard is negative messages growing up. So that's why I just think like for you to now be here, of course, with your incredible story and that tremendous voice that you have is, is wonderful. But I, I can totally see that. I mean, I do that sometimes too. I'm still one of my worst critics when it comes to anything, let alone with the things that I heard growing up. And so I just think like those yeah. things really do, you know, impact people, you know? So like yeah. things that you hear absolutely so I'm just so glad that you know despite that you know taking its time we now can benefit from these incredible stories that you've written and that you're going to keep writing in the future like you said so of course of course I'm going to continue absolutely and so that's what I was going to say so I think I heard like you said you talked a little bit about your first book talked a little bit about the second but then with this third book I don't I don't want you to give too much away about it I know you said you're still in the process but you know is it similar to the ones you've written before what kind of books do you hope to write in the future you know I'm just curious about you know life on the other side uh, like my first book the Greek one mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um it has a, a 30-day process it's tools my books are tools okay it's not stories so um, the third one is a story so this one is different kind of tools for to use for 30 days to kind of reprogram your mind. And I have this book, this Greek one, I have some chapters in here. So if anyone, it, it's the same. So it's again, a book with tools and self, it's like a self-discovery and healing journal. It's ideas and very inspiring for people to read the story. And there is after that exercises for them to do. 
And uh, it's mainly to reprogram your mind and start thinking uh, more positive. And, um, and, to, and it has explanations about the shoots that we were taught and all that behaviors that uh, we inherited from generation to generation from our parents and, you know, grand, 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 grandparents. So, and how to, you know, peel off all that conditioning and start living an authentic life, our authentic self. Absolutely. And, and my third book is kind of my story, uh, how I um, walked, uh, in, uh, walked in life mainly my story so Ava represents not only me but all the wounded children that lived in abusive authoritarian abusive environments so it's um it's again it's going to have some tools inside it's not going to be a story so yep. yeah I'm just no, putting the, the final touch right. and then I'm going to publish it Absolutely. And I'm glad yeah. that, yeah, and, I, and I guess a better word would have been like projects or things that you're sharing and all of that. But thank you for clarifying. There's actually more of the tools you all. So it's not just that you're reading a story about, you know, and all of that. You're actually getting tools that can help improve your life. So yes, I agree. Yeah. That is very, I'm glad it's you the tools, It's the tools, Melissa, I use in my life. So it's all those tools that I use to get where I am today. Okay. Absolutely. And so were some of these tools, the ones that you gained like in therapy and things like that, or some of those tools that you had gained on your own? And some tools and, and many tools from, um, from my own, um, uh, from the books, from the research. And um, many of these tools, uh, it's uh, mainly mine, what I did every day to change my life. And that's amazing. And when you were doing that, I was just curious because I agree. So that's awesome that these were things that are effective. They're proven because you were able to use them. And so I definitely can predict that it's going to help a lot of other people in the future. So I hope many people not only support the book, but also just like, you know, use it to be able to improve their lives. I'm just curious, like where, who inspired you then? Like when you did all of this, like, like you said, a lot of it came from you, but like, is it just research that you always just did on your own? Like, was there anybody that suggested anything to you or were you just, you know, finding out a lot of things? Um, nobody suggested it to me. It was, um, was mainly um, I, I got inspired. It was like I I used to wake up in the middle of the night, and I always had a pad uh, next to my uh, bedside table and a pen. And whenever I woke up, I had inspiration. So much ideas coming in. So I I started writing in the middle of the night, and this was going on for many years. So then I selected all these that I uh, wrote, it was like um, from inspiration from above. It's like um, somebody was guiding me to write the books. So Absolutely. that's what I did. Wow. And uh, I wanted to change my life. So I used to do different things uh, in my day um, to become more positive because I had a really difficult journey. You cannot imagine, Melissa. I am here laughing now. Look at me, I'm smiling. But I had a difficult journey. And I had to find a way to get out of that because I knew that there was more out in life than just abuse. And um, I always felt that there is something greater and bigger in this world. So... Oh. No, no, I definitely can't agree more. And I, I think that's what's so inspiring about this, though, that like, absolutely, I think it was divinely divine intervention. I think, yep, you definitely did have a message that definitely needed to be shared. I definitely feel that you did, you know, there were tools that were effective to you. And I don't think it's an accident that we are here today, like you said, you know what I mean? And so definitely that you were not able to provide that intercession, not only at the university, but to so many others with these books that you're writing and with all these great things that you're a part of. So I definitely think that it's, you know, incredible, but not surprising that you were chosen, you know, to take this work on. And like I said, the best person to be able to carry on that work for sure. But so with that, 
I think you started to allude to it, but I was curious, what other, do you already know what other things you're hoping to do in the future? Like what the future holds for you? Is it more books? Is it more tools? Is it, you know, eventually more engagements? I'm just curious, what, what does the future look like for you? Yeah, I, I would want to. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to continue writing. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to publish my third book and I'm going to continue. And yes, um, maybe, um, maybe I write a novel. I never did that. <laughs> so after I'm done with the tools and writing uh, tools and inspiring people, maybe I'm going to write a novel. Oh, okay, cool. Well, that'll be cool. <laughs> you see, looking forward to that. That's awesome. So if there are individuals who want to be able to like connect with you, you know, who might want to know more, be the first to know when your book is dropping or anything like that, how yeah. is it that others can connect? Well, I'm in uh, all social media. I'm in Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. I have my YouTube channel. And um, so I don't know, uh, we can share my um, information somewhere. Absolutely. So I have uh, an Amazon page, web page. Okay. Oh, so you literally, yeah. So literally, y'all, uh, as y'all hearing, there is no way that you cannot find Elena because she's everywhere. So <laughs> there should be a way for I'm you. everywhere. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and then what kind of things do you touch on on your YouTube show? Well, um, mainly I do inspiring stories. I mean, uh, I might go to the gym and uh, do something, you know, show people with a message or um, different stuff. Or maybe I do lives and speak about different situations. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I just keep it there. And, and whenever I want to do something, I right. just share it there. There you go. So there's, a, like I said, there's multiple ways for you to be able to plug in. You all connect. If there's anything that resonated today, definitely encourage you to do so. And so Elena, is there anything else that you wanted to share with our viewers today? Any other message you wanted to share? Anything at all? I'm going to share what I said in the beginning. I said yes to me. And I want other women to be able to say yes to themselves. That's my message. And there Absolutely. is life after and there is life after abuse, and I'm a living proof. That's Woo! my message. <laughs> Absolutely, but to say that, <laughs> I appreciate that so much. I agree, and all I want to do is just echo, lift that up, provide all my validation to that, and I definitely can agree more. I definitely think that you are a living, breathing, walking example of what it's like to overcome abuse, to not be defined by the abuse, to not be limited at all by the abuse. I think you found an incredible calling. I think that the university, like I said, all those students are so lucky to be able to have your great advocacy and your tremendous support. I'm super excited for all these books that you've already made and all the ones that you will do in the future and I'm just so happy that you know you shared your time with us today and all the great things that you're doing all I want to wish you is you know best wishes with that you know and just hope that others will definitely connect as well especially with all the great things that you're sharing and doing and that they at least find one way to connect with you you know if they can yeah. So absolutely. All right. So with that, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. But also thank you, viewers, always, um, not only for connecting with us, for supporting and watching as always. We appreciate you. And we always appreciate your feedback, all your comments, all your wonderful support. And so thank you all. And thank you, Elena. Bye-bye. Bye, Melissa. Thank you, too. Thank you.